Hello, and welcome to this instructional video. Today, we will explain how to correctly and safely test a urine sample using urinalysis strips or dipsticks, accurately document the correct clinical information following completion of the task. Let's first start by defining a urinalysis. A urinalysis is the measurement and interpretation of the physical, chemical, and microscopic properties of urine. A urine sample is tested using dipsticks with reagent strips, which become activated by immersion in the urine sample. The color changes on the reagent strips based on the various components of urine can be examined visually and compared to a color scale. The main advantages of using a urine dipstick are that it is convenient, quick, and non-invasive with results usually determined in a few minutes. The main disadvantage is inaccuracy of interpretation. The indications for urinalysis using dipstick are 1. For screening prevention during routine health assessments. 2. For diagnosis of suspected conditions such as infections or of systemic diseases such as diabetes mellitus, hemolytic disorders, renal and liver diseases. Three, for management and planning with the aim of ascertaining a baseline and then monitoring the progress of an existing condition and treatment efficacy. Four, for measuring response to certain treatments. And five, to assess hydration status. Contraindications, well, there are no absolute contraindications for urinalysis using dipstick method, as it is a non-invasive procedure. It should be noted that stool or blood soiled urine cannot be accurately tested through the urine dipstick method. So let's talk about how to prepare for urinalysis using the dipstick method. The already collected urine sample can be taken out of the room or patient space. A sample should be labeled correctly with the patient's details. If a sample is not labeled, it must be discarded immediately and the urinalysis should not be undertaken. After leaving the patient's bedside, perform hand hygiene. Clean and disinfect the area for carrying out the testing and allow to dry. This allows us to create a clean field for the urinalysis, where we can avoid cross-contamination and minimize the risk for infection. Now it is time to begin gathering the equipment. We will need non-sterile gloves, alcohol-based hand rub, urine sample in a sterile container. This is where we should confirm the label has the patient's name, the date, and time of collection. The urinalysis strips, it is important to check that the reagent sticks have been stored according to manufacturer's instructions and are not expired. The biohazard waste bin and a detergent or disinfectant for surfaces, such as surfanios. It should be clearly labeled with a date and should not be expired. Gathering our equipment ahead of time helps minimize disruptions during the procedure, which ensures the accuracy of the results. Now, Let's consider some key tips before starting the procedure. Urine samples should be the first morning urine or a midstream catch. Urine samples must be a minimum volume of five milliliters. The optimum time between collecting and testing the urine is two hours. If it has been or will be longer, then the sample should be refrigerated at four degrees Celsius and should not be exposed to direct sunlight. The sample must be back at room temperature before testing. Let's go on to the procedure. This procedure can be performed two ways. The first is to keep the sample sterile using a sterile syringe, and the other is to dip the reagent strip directly into the urine. We will now walk you through the steps and we will show you the different methods. We start by performing hand hygiene as we are about to begin a procedure. Don non-sterile gloves, as some pathogens can be directly transmitted through urine. Gloves are indicated to avoid skin contact with urine. Remember, gloves do not replace hand hygiene. 
Aprons prevent soiling of your uniform from splashes of body fluids. Therefore, an apron could be worn. Place the sample container on a stable surface. Mix the urine sample thoroughly by shaking it to prevent layering of any sediment. Do not centrifuge the sample. Observe the color, odor, and turbidity or aspects of the urine to document later. Remove a reagent dipstick from the container. Look to see if the dipsticks are discolored. If yes, discard it and take another. Place the stick on the tray. Method one, the sterile syringe. Open the sterile package, maintaining sterility of the syringe. This means you do not touch the key parts. Open the lid of the urine sample. Place the syringe into the urine and withdraw less than one mil of urine. Return the lid to the urine container. Drop the urine onto the test strip, ensuring each square has enough urine. Discard the syringe and wrapper into the waste bin. Lay the strip horizontally on a flat surface to ensure accuracy. Do not touch the testing area of the strip to avoid cross-contamination. Method 2. Open the lid of the urine sample, completely immerse the reagent area of the dipstick into the urine sample for one to two seconds, or according to the manufacturer's instructions. Withdraw the test strip and gently tap the edges of the strip against the urine container to remove excess urine. Lay the strip horizontally on a flat surface to ensure accuracy. Do not touch the testing area of the strip to avoid cross-contamination. After waiting 60 to 120 seconds, let's interpret the results. During the interpretation of results, do not apply the dipstick directly onto the box or container. This is to avoid the transfer of urine and the risk of contamination. Read the test at exactly the time specified by the manufacturer of the dipsticks. This is usually between 60 and 120 seconds. Reading the test before or after the specified times can lead to false reactions or a not true or inaccurate result. Compare the test squares on the strip with the colors on the container. Always report the value of the nearest color block. Do not report colors that develop after the specified time. Such colors are false reactions and are not true results. Remember, blood or stool soiled samples cannot be accurately tested. Only negative protein, glucose, and leukocyte results could be reported if the urine sample contains red blood cells. Post procedure The following steps should be followed to ensure infection control practices are maintained. If the urine is not to be used for other tests, dispose of the urine sample and materials used during the test in the appropriate waste container. Thoroughly wash your hands with soap and water because body fluids were touched. Put on clean, non-sterile gloves and disinfect any surfaces used for the procedure. Thoroughly wash your hands with soap and water. Documentation Documentation is an essential component of patient care to ensure that accurate records of all investigations and assessments are maintained. If a patient is hospitalized, the following information should be documented clearly and accurately in the patient's notes. Time, date, and location that the urinalysis was completed. Finally, the test results of the urinalysis should be documented. Any abnormal readings should be reported to the treating clinician. Note, if an abnormality is found, the urine sample might be sent to the laboratory for a more detailed analysis, if the resources are available and allowed. Congratulations, you have now completed a urine dipstick procedure. If you need further clarification, please refer to 14.5 Urine Dipstick Method in the Nursing Care Manual of Procedures. Additionally, do not hesitate to contact your supervisor, the nursing or medical referent, or the training team. Thank you.